and there'll be no more waves, no birds, no bears, rich, a little higher, Jesus, stay, a little higher, Jesus, Answer your prayer, and there will be no more waves, no burdens to bear. Reach a little higher, Jesus is there. Reach a little higher, Jesus. trial of her lifetime. Daddy was building a church in a town where no full gospel voice was. And Daddy said, God's called me to build a church here. And he took her away from a beautiful parsonage and church that was her favorite place in the world. And Daddy gets, quote, a message from God. But she believed in her heart the Bible with everything that she had. She would confront anybody if she didn't believe what they said. I have some of those weaknesses. My mother wrote that song. My heritage was God's greatest gift to me my youth, to have a mother who believed the Bible, a father who believed it, taught it day and night, seven children that lived and built seven churches, and he sought God every day. We memorized there's one scripture every single morning off of a calendar. You want to write a note? Write, create a wisdom calendar. Create a wisdom calendar. My mother had asked me to create a calendar, and I did for the partners, but it's been many years ago. I need to do it again. The most important scriptures in the Bible you need to know. We had prayer two times a day, every morning before school and every night. Saturdays was at 10 o'clock. My daddy woke me up. Massaging my feet when I was 16, 17 years old. He didn't flip a light up and down. He would start massaging his feet. And when we'd start waking up, he'd say, called us little spooker lookers. Little spooker looker, time to get up. He would say it softly. I never heard my father yell or scream at me one time. My mother never screamed or yelled at me, not once. Reach a little higher. Jesus is still there. Reach a little higher. He'll 
answer your prayer and there be no more weight, no burdens to bear. A little higher, reach a little higher, reach a little higher. Jesus is there. I love sitting. I love hearing every word you say. I'm so pleasure to hold it. But it was like a sunrise driving all my nights away. I love sin and joy. Holy Spirit. I love sin and joy. Holy Spirit. Every single day. Ah, so much burning in me. I got up this morning at 1.30 after about three hours of sleep, went to my Jesus room, and I began to talk to the Father. There's several words that kept coming in my mouth over and over, and I quickly moved to my iPad, and I copied down those words so I could find out they were words of the Spirit, but I want to find out what some of them mean. Knowledge is fascinating because it multiplies. You don't collect knowledge, it multiplies. When you take one piece of knowledge, it affects every other word, everything else in your world. Nobody stays the same 24 hours in a row. You become different people through the day. Your basics are easy to see and identify and read. Today's title, Becoming a Man Worth Knowing. Yesterday, a 23-year-old lady on our staff asked me a question. She said, Dr. Murdoch, how did you get Miss Christina, your wife, to fall in love with you. My first thought was, wow, she doesn't see what's worth falling in love with this young lady. She's stunned if anybody would love me. That was my first funny thought. Try to introduce funny to every tense situation. And I thought, and she, I said, well, I said, uh, I was, I'm, uh, I love integrity. And I love conversation. And I'm crazy about the Bible. But I started to tell her, maybe she believed I was a man worth knowing. Now, how would she know that when she couldn't speak one word of English? She watched me on the platform. I had sent a message through Twitter to her that I wanted to meet her. I taught the staff this morning for two hours. And one of the stories I shared with them is really worth hearing. I was in Abuja, Nigeria, in a beautiful, gorgeous hotel suite, where the pastor had invited me. 
Master Beoden Parayimbo, the head founder of COZA, C-O-Z-A, which is one of the most profound men I'd ever met in my life. He knows more about hospitality than possibly. He's easily one of the top five people in my world. When I arrived at the airport, he had picked me up in a beautiful, beautiful Lamborghini. When I got to my hotel suite, he had pictures of my mother and my father all over the room, my world. He had contacted my office. All I'd say, he's world-class, high genius in hospitality. Never in all my years of ministry had anybody put pictures of my home and people in a beautiful suite. In the dining room was five metal trays of my favorite foods. He had called the office to see what I loved. The best people in your life invest in your pleasure. The best people in your life stop the pain in your life. That's the best people. What is wisdom? Recognizing difference in people. There's as much difference in people as there is our holy God and Lucifer, the devil. There's as much difference in people. What's the difference between an angel and a devil? Loyalty. Loyalty. I went into the bathroom of this suite. And there is 50 choices of perfume, cologne, toilet, toothpaste. The bathtub was already run with hot water, with roses all over the top of the water. I had never seen anything like this in my life. The difference in people is excellent. The difference in people is their willingness to invest. I walked into the bathroom and there were towels. Coza, C-O-Z-A, Coza. Only place I've been in my lifetime where the towels had the names of the church on them. Then I walked into my bedroom laying across the bed was a robe with my name, Dr. Mike Murdoch, on the robe. Nobody in my lifetime have ever done anything like that. The highest class preachers on the earth are in Nigeria. Their head and shoulders above every other preacher in America, Brazil, England. Nobody can compare with the class of preachers in Nigeria. Nobody. Nowhere in the world. Nothing close. I looked at the robe. And, whew, I didn't know what to say. Gorgeous. I went into the kitchen area where those five metal trays were with my five favorite foods. To the left was a desk, a dresser with over 50 choices of cereal, candy, and cookies, over 50 choices. I'd never been around that in my lifetime.
study someone you love until you are the highest pleasurable experience in their world. Attentiveness is the proof of admiration. Celebration is the proof of honor. And if you master the law of honor, you will never be broke a day in your life. You will never lack for endorsements. And it will be impossible to ever be homeless if you understand the law of honor. When he gave me an offering, it wasn't a check stuck in an envelope. It was inside a Louis Vuitton case, a Louis Vuitton case, cash, and he presented it to me privately. I was in that environment when Bishop Matthew called me from England and said, there's a man, a preacher friend of mine, has a dream of you preaching for him. I said, Bishop Matthew, I really wish I could. I really wish I could. But I'm anxious to get home. My plane leaves in six hours. I'm looking at my luggage right now. They're picking me up in a beautiful limousine. And uh, I'm anxious to get home. Bishop Matthew Ashimolo, which is one of my greatest experiences of my lifetime. No man with more courage, creativity. He said on the phone a sentence. I kind of understood, as I recall, that he ran 35,000 people. We were talking on Saturday, and it was the next Sunday afternoon. So he had a big church, but there's times that none of that matters to you. 35,000 people would be waiting for me Sunday afternoon. I didn't care. I want to be home. I want to be home. But he said something. It stopped me on the phone. He said, Dr. Murdoch, he's really a man worth knowing. Words decide your focus. Words decide the changes you're willing to make. Everything on the earth is controlled by words. Words. Words decide what you trust who you trust, what you change. Words decide what you can conquer. Your words decide what you feel. Your words decide your goals. Words decide your plans. That was the one word he said, one sentence. Dr. Murdoch, he's really a man worth changes everything. When someone I respect quietly says he's a man worth knowing, I said, okay, okay. I change anything and everything for somebody worth knowing. of the greatest decisions of my lifetime. He's one of the top five men I honor on the earth. He's a man that's in my will. Today. Go to 
fly there. It's Saturday. They want me there tomorrow. So I call the airport. No planes are going there. The average person, which I'm not, but the average person would call back and say, no planes are going there tomorrow. So I won't be able to do what I thought. I won't be able to complete my promise because there's no, there's no flights, no commercial flights there. But see, I'm not a, I'm not a, a guy where, I'm not a normal guy. Nothing about me is normal. But see, I know that. Do you know, do you know what's not normal about you? And you build your life around the gold God's put inside you. I'm a man that will do what I say. I'm a man that is not easily stopped. I'm not a stoppable. I want something, I want it. If I want something, I want it. Fabulous. Can you make that word yellow like that? Never forget wisdom keys. Never forget my wisdom keys. They unlock your palace. Prosperity is decided by who you've chosen to please. And don't ever forget that. Prosperity is decided by who you choose to please. Prosperity is determined by what you're willing to change. I've got 25,000 wisdom keys that I teach from. God put them in me. If I quote somebody else, I'll tell you who they are. I never quote anybody, anybody, without telling you who they are, with one exception I did one time. That was Sherman Owens. I was in a flow. But I will never quote a man and not give you his name. That's called honor and integrity. I called a charter plane. Thousand dollars an hour, two pilots, and when I landed the next afternoon, I found out they had to keep the engine running while I preached. Because Nigeria had a law that we couldn't spend the night there. I had to fly back that night to Lagos. That plane cost me thousands of dollars, but I had told him I would preach for him the next day. Never seen the man in my life. Did not will know. I did not know anything about him except this phrase. That's it. That's it. Become, he's a man, Dr. Murdoch, he's a man worth knowing. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. As he rode me from the airport to the 35,000 people gathered, he smiled quietly and said almost nothing except these words, this is a dream come true. This is a dream come true. That's what he said. Real quietly. What made this man great? Number one, he wanted to know me. He wanted to know me. He has the Billy Graham family come to his church. I've been there with the Billy Graham's grandson 
all that. I know all that. But he wanted me to come to his church. You don't think that stands out to me? Someone that knows my value? Someone that celebrates my difference? Someone that values who I am? Hand me my 112 cover. This woman jumps to do things that bring me joy. It's in the little brown case. I have a brown case somewhere with my phone. Stop beside me up there. I'm so sorry. Okay. He wants to know me. Oh, it's where I was sitting in the bottom. That's okay. That's good. That's good. This is a hundred dollar bill. You get paid by the hour, but you produce so fast, so much. But you're attentive. Excuse me, I'm talking to one of my staff. A person I don't want a world without her in it. I don't want her life without her in it. She's from Peru. She's genius, gifted, full of God, kind, gracious. I've never heard a wrong word come out of her mouth. She's way ahead of me on that. This hundred dollars is to show honor for you, wanting to help me and walk with me. You changed all your list of 20 things, all the projects you have going. She coordinates every book I write. She is my mediator with publishing companies, printing companies. She is the one who's mastered the prices of everything I print. This just means, the hundred means this is the beginning of a hundredfold return. This is not your reward. It's a picture of your future reward. Because Jesus said everything you do for him comes back a hundredfold. Hundred times a hundred is ten thousand. It's just a little extra, thank you. You think she's worthy? I know she's worthy. Just a little extra thank you. Now, when I give it to her, when I do things like this, she does a little dance. And she knows how. She doesn't say, thanks, bye-bye. She creates a memory every time I reward her in any little way. And I'm saying this for a reason. The preacher said to me, this is a dream come true. He's one of the greatest humans I ever met in my life. He's flown numerous times from Nigeria to Dallas, Texas for my birthday party. The next day, fly all the way back to Nigeria. His church seats 150,000. He flew here a few days ago to spend the day with me. He came on his 26th wedding anniversary to spend time with me. So when Bishop Matthew said, he's a man worth knowing, I changed every plan. Nothing mattered. I remember I preached the Saturday five, six services on Sunday for him. And Sunday night he says, would you stay over tomorrow to speak to my men?
worth knowing. We all want to meet people like that. But how do you become someone like that? Attentiveness. Give attention to your environment. Identify the authority. Submit to the protocols. You become a person, male or female, worth knowing when you honor the environment others have built, others have created. You don't saunter in like a know-it-all and take charge of somebody else's life and world. You're attentive. You watch. You look. Where did I get that from? Genesis who is the man? Joseph. Joseph was a man worth knowing. But his brothers had seen him in the process when he was a kid. So they were completely blind to the gold of God hidden within him. They hated him. He would share his dreams and the pictures he had of the future. And it would anger them so much they made a decision to kill him. His own brothers wanted to kill him. Is there a brother in your family that's worth knowing? Worth protecting? Worth celebrating? And they threw him in the bottom, bottom of a hole that he couldn't get out of. And they sneered and cursed him. One of his brothers had a, a little conscience. And he, he said, uh, oh, wow, why don't, why don't we just sell him? Let's sell him as a slave. Then we won't have to bury him. A passing caravan of Ishmaelites was going by. For $12.80, according to Dake's annotated Bible, they sold him into slavery. Hatred doesn't change who you are. The hatred of others makes you become who you want to be. I will always stay the man I am, no matter how many others want to become devils. I will always be Mike Murdoch, no matter what. Hatred is the seed for endorsement from God, public endorsement. The hatred of men creates divine attention to you. Matthew 5. Potiphar's wife liked his looks. Josephus, the Jewish historian, says that Joseph had such a sexual body, so gorgeous, small waist, muscular, pecs were remarkable. Everything was so classy about him. That one day when her husband, the leader Potiphar, the boss of Joseph, one day when he left out of the house, she came up behind him and she put her arms around him and said, Man, you turn me on. I want you. I want every inch of you. What had happened was, history says she brought him in and had all of his clothes stripped off of him nude. They could see his penis. And she would bring her top government ladies around 
And they would use Joseph as an entertainment center. And they would watch him and talk about him and discuss him. That's what he went through. And after she came around him and began to hug on him, he says, I can't do this. Ma'am, you don't belong to me. You belong to your husband. You're a beautiful woman. But we can't do this. I serve a God that I have respect for. The rest depends on my imagination. But he took her arms and he pulled them away and he took running off through the house out the door. Your future depends on what you're willing to walk away from. A no to sin is a yes to God's promotion. What you're willing to walk away from, who you're willing to walk away from, determines the future God cultivates for you. Wise men know that it's dangerous to refuse the desires of a woman. It's dangerous. You can live for years with false accusations when you run from a woman. There's nothing more dangerous in a man's world that a woman who has been refused. Nothing is deadly. Nothing can destroy your reputation faster than saying no to a woman. I've been there. I've tasted that sorrow and heartache. But he refused to take another man's wife. He refused to disappoint his God. Joseph was a man worth knowing. Very few men could choose purity over pleasure. Very few men choose purity over pleasure. Joseph was a man worth knowing. Potiphar threw him in a dungeon. The butler and the baker were thrown out of the palace because a king was upset. Joseph woke up one morning and he wasn't screaming at God. He wasn't crying out to God. He didn't say, God, what's wrong? God, you lied to me. God, you gave me a dream and look where I'm at. No, no, Joseph's a man worth knowing. He's a man that's attentive to the pain in his environment. And he says to the butler and the baker, why are you crying? What's wrong? What happened? They both told him their dream. Joseph said, God uses me in the interpreting of dreams. I, I may have an answer for you. Father, what's the answer for him? God talks to anybody he likes. He talks incessantly to someone he enjoys. Remember, the first communicator in the universe was our Jehovah. He's a master communicator. He wanted to be remembered for one thing, his words. He said, call me the word. Just call me the word. 
he told them one of them was going to get killed by Pharaoh so he could anticipate, get his family ready, get his settlement. The other one, he says, you're going to be promoted back in favor. And then he looked at the butler and he says, uh, I haven't done anything to be here in prison. He didn't complain and say, I've been lied about, I've been tricked. Uh, Potiphar's wife told everybody I'd raped her. He just very gently says, there's no reason why I should be here. Would you mention me to the palace? Remember, your change depends on who believes in you. Changes in your life depends on who trusts you. Your success depends on who feels safe around you. And Joseph spoke up for himself and says, I, uh, I shouldn't be here. Two years later, the man remembers. Wisdom key. Everything good is usually forgotten quickly. Why? Only painful experiences become our focus. He says, Pharaoh, I'm so sorry. Pharaoh came in mad. A mad king is a lifetime memory. We remember Esther's husband, when he got mad, he was a rough man to deal with. He kicked Vashti out of the, out of the kingdom. You can lose your palace entry in a day, in one day. Pharaoh called for him. The rest is history. In 24 hours, he went from chains to sitting on a throne. There's five people watching me who are about to experience a very positive, radical improvement in your life. Three will happen in 21 days. Two of you will be a little longer. I don't know for that. But there's five people watching me that's right on the edge of the curve of radical change. And it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Your role watching me is to say, I receive that in my covenant with my God. I receive that prophecy. I receive it. That's your role. Don't sneer. Don't talk smart of it. Your role is to receive. Because the secret of life is receiving. Receiving an opportunity. Receiving correction. Receiving someone's difference. The wisest people on earth are geniuses at receiving. geniuses. Joseph became a man worth knowing because he was attentive to the needs of those around him. Joseph became a man worth knowing because he didn't wait like a little whimpering puppy for everybody to come to him. He reached out. He pursued. He involved himself in conversations with others. He reacted to tears. Joseph became a man worth knowing because he would rather have his purity than pleasure. He would rather God's approval than a sexy woman. That's a man worth knowing. He was a man worth knowing because he could hear God talk. 
he heard God's whispers. He was a man worth knowing because he could get his mind off of his brothers long enough to hear God talk. What you're willing to walk away from depends on what God will bring to you. He was second in command. He decided who would eat and who wouldn't. He decided the businesses that would fail and the ones that would succeed. It's the decisions of others towards you. It's the decisions of others towards you that changes everything. Your decision to celebrate approval, celebrate an opportunity, Celebrate acceptance. Celebrate the favor around you. I know like that if somebody really values my favor. Favor is not a miracle from God. Favor is a reaction to the pleasure you create for somebody. You sow pleasure and you reap favor. Everywhere there's favor, there's honor. And everywhere there's honor, there's prosperity. You can't sow a river of honor and reap drops of favor. The rest is history. This is our book of the day. Becoming a man worth knowing. His brothers showed up during the famine. When they walked through the door, they didn't recognize who he was. Why? He wasn't a little brother. He was King Pharaoh number two. And when he saw them, he burst into tears. Forgiveness isn't forgetting. I don't care who brought you pain. You don't forget that. And he darted into the side back room to get away from everybody. And he cried and he wept and he sobbed. He had never even told Pharaoh about his childhood experience of sorrow. He never told them about the torment created by his brothers. He never told them that he was sold as a slave. He never shared his broken heart. But he never forgot who brought him the pain. And when he came back out, he started the testing. Who had they become? You know the story better than I do. He said, uh, do you have any brothers? They said, we have a little, a baby brother, Benjamin, back with his father. He said, uh, I don't know if I believe you. I'm going to keep one of you here. I'm going to keep one of you here in jail until you bring that boy back. And let me see. He tested the yesterday assassins of his dream. He tested the people that did him wrong. He put them through a path to see if they were still the way they were or had they changed. The story is phenomenal. And when he saw that they he heard them talk in their language. They didn't know he could speak their language. And he heard them talking. This is bad. This, God's punishing us for what we did to Joseph. We did wrong. And he saw the change of heart had developed. The rest is profound. When he finally made things right, he says, I'm Joseph, your baby brother. They went into shock. They could hardly talk. And he said, it's okay. 
what you meant for evil, God turned it for my good. And I want to give all of you a piece of land. I want to give all of you a home. And I've got some special property. And I've got all of you in some where you can all live together as a big family. I'm king. I can do anything I want in this country as number two in the land. And I'm going to be good. Joseph is a man worth knowing. Do you want to be that kind of man? Are you a man worth knowing? Are you a woman worth knowing? Are you really worth knowing? Why? What would change in my life if I was with you for five minutes? How would my life improve if we spent one hour together? How would my world improve if I had one day with you of eight hours? What would change for me? Are you a man worth knowing? Father, thank you for the revelation. And we could go through your word. Abraham was a man worth knowing. Because he was a master at hospitality. Paul was a man worth knowing because he was obsessed with truth. Jeremiah was a man worth knowing because he wept over the rebellion of Israel. David was a man worth knowing because he repented quickly. And constantly praised you and worshipped you and sung to you. Solomon was a man worth knowing. So much that the queen of Sheba traveled nine months to see him one day. Because he was a man obsessed with wisdom from heaven. Make us people worth knowing. Father, I ask you for three people. To come into our lives today worth knowing. Help us to discern them, recognize them, honor them, and celebrate them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, family, for letting me be in your world. Thank you. We'll show you on the screen the ways that you can plant seeds of support to help me stay on television, stay on the radio in Jerusalem, Help me preach and teach the gospel. You can use Cash App. If you want to screenshot this, you can. Australia, thank you for being with me. Hope that's David. It is. Yay. I just saw the country and now I see it. David, you're a master, faithful person. Brazil, Canada, Congo. Ghana is here. Indonesia, Jamaica, Nigeria, South Africa, the UK. Miss Renee Poole. Pastor John from Canada is with me. Martha Garrett's here. Susan Lord. John Gui said, I receive it in Jesus' name. Femi said, I received that prophecy in 21 days. Indonesia's here. Mishina, thank you for taking the time to respond. Mishina is one of my prayer team leaders. She's a woman who loves people, taking care of her mother and several children. Cindy Jones, quote, there is nothing in this world more compelling than you telling the stories and truths of the Bible. You bring the people to life. We can see the scenes unfolding. This is critically important today. Cindy, you're a master communicator, a master writer. I'm anxious you to help me on one of my books, the editing. I'm anxious for that. Linda. Those are fabulous words, Linda. Hold on, let me read them. Genuine heart of gold, easy to love. Wow, Linda, thank you. Jackie Pate. So thankful. Thankful. Pastor Anna mentions this being an audio book. 
And I think it should be too. I will do that. I will turn this into an audio book. Frank Champion, Andrew, Billy Ray Peters, Dr. May, hope you're okay. This is a special day for her. Make a note. Zachary Shaw. Massive chills. I receive this with all I have. I want to be a man worth knowing. Jackie Pate. Teen Vision. Tamara White. Paul Wright. Paul, you have a countenance that talks for God. You're a remarkable man. You're remarkable. Make a note for Paul Wright. First time I ever met you, Paul. God talked to me and told me he, you were a man he listened to. Never forget that. 4051 Denton Highway, the Wisdom Center. When I looked into your face, God said he's a man I listened to. Christopher. Christopher says, quote, I don't know even know if I'm a good man anymore. So lost, I hung on to my dream through hell and back. I believe and kept believing in the assignment God gave me. I barely believe in myself anymore. Can hardly go another step, end quote. Christopher, there's three things. Number one, you being willing to talk like this shows a remarkable openness inside of you. Christopher, there's a rare humility in you. Failure is not final. Failure is a step toward wisdom. And what you've gone through is worth discussing. But even more so is the next chapter of this beginning. You've got more wisdom now, Christopher, than you've ever had in your lifetime. You've never had this much wisdom in your whole life. You will make the best decisions in the next 120 days. Christopher, I'm taping all of this. Make a note to send him what I'm saying. I want him to journal it. Joyce Lee, quote, Electrified. James Lynchy, Florida. Lynn, my safe place is here, and I'm COVID free. Thank you, Father. Apostle Sonia. Shock. Shock, you have an exceptional mind. Shock, you have the ability to love. Probably double of any man I've seen. Jacques, you are a master at loving. There's zones in your life that are broken. But you know how to love. Jacques, you know how to love. You love with all of you. You don't hold anything back. Nima from the Congo. The Congo is one of my greatest experiences of my lifetime of ministry. Make a note of her. Would you make a note of the person in the Congo? Make a note. Shirley's from Cape Town.
to spend the rest of my days in your grace, in my grace. I'm building my life, building all my dreams, Holy Spirit. Father, I sanctify this time with our family. One of the most remarkable breakthrough revelations we could have. How to become a person, a leader. How to become a mother, a father, worth knowing. Take this. Lord, I'm going to turn this into an audio today. I'm going to turn it into an audio. For anyone to download, they would like this. In Jesus' name, amen. I ask the Lord today for 12 special seeds to help us in our ministry. Eight will be $200. I don't know what the other four are. 12 is the number of power, authority, and government. 12 gates of Jerusalem. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples of Jesus, and I hope you'll be one of the 12. Father, when we open our hands, you open your windows. I ask you for 12 uncommon seeds of obedience. I ask you for 12 uncommon seeds of obedience. I ask you for eight seeds of $200. Eight seeds of two hundred dollars. Those eight know who they are because they know your whispers. They know your voice. I ask you for four seeds of obedience. I ask you for two out of the four to be one thousand dollars within the next thirty days. And I ask you to break the back of poverty. Give them a debt-free home in 18 months. Whoever those two people are is supposed to sow a $1,000 seed within 30 days from today. I ask you to give them a debt-free home in 18 months. I ask you for seven harvests to every seed. Seven harvests. Financial wisdom. Financial favor. Financial discipline. Financial skills, financial opportunities, and financial ideas. In Jesus' name. Those last two are going to change your life forever within 30 days from today. Opportunities to solve a problem for somebody. Opportunity to endorse someone you believe in. God will give you ideas like he gave me. That made me a fortune. Doesn't take but one idea to change your world 180 degrees. Amen. Thank you for being in my life. Would you bring me one of each of those three? The eight people sowing a seed. Would you mind those three books? Those master books we ask you for them. I've got two of them here. I've got two of them. Yes, those two. The eight people that are sowing, the 
eight people that are sowing the $200 seed within the next seven days. Just call us today. If you're going to sow the 200 a week from now, that's okay. Just let us know. But I'm sending to the eight people sowing a $200 seed. I'm sending you the Morris Cirillo Financial Freedom Bible. There's only 14 left, I think, in my world. But the eight people that sow a $200 seed today or within the next seven days, I'm sending you. Have you seen his Bible? I wish he was alive and we were able to get some more. You have never seen a financial Bible, anything close to this in your life. The first eight people, the first eight people that sow the $200 seed today, you're going to receive the Morris Cirillo. He's in heaven. I have 14 left in my world. I don't even know if you could ever get these the rest of your life. You will never see a Bible like this. The Quick Scan Bible. It's a Bible where they bolded certain words so you can, you can read a chapter in five or eight seconds. Those that want to go through the Bible quickly, and it's easy to understand. You've never seen a Bible like this. I have only have a few left. The Quick Scan Bible. And the third gift I call it gift of appreciation. My gift to honor your seed is the power of positive prayer. Bible by Bishop Matthew Ashimolo. I can't believe what he did with. You cannot believe how many facts he gave you on how to pray, what to say. This may be the last time I offer this. All three I don't know what's for Thursday. Thursday today. Call it my Thursday offer for today. The offer number is the offer number is uh, ten twenty seven. Today's the twenty seventh. Ten twenty seven. Please don't delay this. I won't be able to honor your seed in this way except for the next few hours. Offer 1027-682-717-5359. Son, would you take this to the prayer team? I didn't tell anybody. I didn't know it till I started teaching and the Lord began to show me. The $200 seed gave me a lifetime of clothes. I sowed my $200 seed when I was 20 uh, 22, I think. Oh, no. Wednesday night. George, no. Saturday night. David George. Write down David George. Uh, he needs some He needs some help. I'm going to send him $200 today. $200. I was watching a young preacher in a church, Lake Charles, longtime friend. God told me to give my clothes back. I'd saved up $200 to buy a suit because I only had one black suit. I saved up $200 and God told me to sew my $200 clothes money. And the rest is history. If you hadn't heard that testimony, it's crazy, crazy glorious. Uh, I want a book about the $200 seat. You want to write that down? Within 14 days, a lady called me, Pat Seaton. Memphis, Tennessee area, North Little Rock, North, no Memphis, West Memphis, Arkansas. Her son had died four weeks before. She said, God told me to, to treat you like my son. And she started buying me $2,000 suits, month after month, every six months, $2,000 suits. I walked away from my clothes money, and God's kept me in clothes. $2,000 suits given by people all over the world. That's supposed to be a, that's special. That's special. Would you also write down to put my uh, 12 levels in 12 little books and send it to partners? Wisdom key. Your experience with God becomes your message 
to people. Well, Robert said tuberculosis. I had poverty. And a preacher talked to me about sowing a seed. There's a person, there's one person today, maybe more, but there's one particular person watching me that would like to sow a hundred dollar seed. But you're not accustomed to sowing at that level. That's okay. Would you mind calling? and making a faith promise that if God was to bless you, I want to call you back. Because a preacher, I didn't have $100. A preacher in his 60s told us to make a faith promise for one year. And I stood shaking. And I made a promise publicly that if God was to give me $100, supernaturally, I'd sow it. There's a person watching me today. All I want you to do is say, Brother Mike, if God will give me $100, I will show it. I want to call you back in. I just really pray. Actually, I'm about to change your money life forever. Today's the poorest you will ever be in the rest of your life. There's a person. There may be more, but I only see one in my heart. There's a person watching me. And you long to sow a hundred dollar seed. But your back's against the wall. I want to pray for God to let my anointing that he's put on my life come upon you. Just move. You don't have to have it today. You just say, Mike, if God was to provide me a hundred dollars, I'd sow it. Because I'm going to follow your life. You're going to be blessed beyond your wildest dreams. Fifty-six people had become millionaires my teaching. 55 told me face to face. It's $200 seat. Dr. Diana Hudgens Brown is a master encourager. Here's what she just wrote me. Quote, everything I've heard today, I've loved, loved, loved. David is catching up on re-airs in Australia. Georgia Thomas, what a master masterful person who walks with me in ministry, been with me for years. Vernon Carver, Leanne smiles. Boy, that woman is full of God. She writes, she's, you read what she writes on Twitter? She's full of God. Pastor Joseph O'Binge. Oh, I'm supposed to make him a video for his church. I'm supposed to make him a video for his church. I'll send that to you, Pastor Joseph. Kavina. Zachary sowed his 112 yesterday. He says, I will sow the 200 the next seven days. There's a person, there's a person, actually two, there's two people that are wanting to sow to my personal anointing, my life, my ministry. Would you put that on the screen again? There's two people. And I want to, I said this at 116 today. There's two people that feel stirred to bless me in a personal way. Don't know how much it is. That's not the point. Obedience is the point. But I want to write their names down. I want to write their, I'm speaking this at 116. Thursday, October the 27th. I want you to call 682-717 and whatever the number is. Now it's off the screen, but I want you to call those numbers. Eight hours a day, my team prays for people here from 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 at night. There it is, 682-717-5353. Post office box is 1925. I sent a book to you the other day. It should arrive. Uh, it should arrive within the next five or six days. Please read that book. Please read it. Al Ravine. My, my, my. He heard God's voice. 
to come to Dallas and meet me. He told me, you're a man worth knowing. Quote, my life has been changed. I've been encouraged during the darkest moments. You've always been a light with your wisdom that flows in you like a river. Out of you in streams that make people glad. All the people who will listen. Thank you, Dr. Mike. From the bottom of my heart, I will be sowing the second 112 seed within the next 24 hours. Oh, Apostle Sonia, that means the world to me. Family, if you hadn't heard my testimony sometime, I'll share it. The 112 covenant. God gave me land. God gave me money stacked on stack. When I started sowing the $112 seed every month, I went to every seven days. Eventually, I went to every day. $112 seed based on Psalms, 112th Psalm, verses 1 and 3. Please read it. Please read it. I would love to read your book, Apostle Son. I would love to read that. It's been miraculous. There's been 12 different seeds. The lowest seed God ever spoke to me about was $58 because there's 58 kinds of blessings in the Bible. These three incredible, I'm sending to the eight people, sowing a $200 seed. If you want to sow it, but you need a few days to sow it, that's okay. I will still go ahead and send you these books. The Power of Positive Prayer. You cannot believe the hundreds of facts about prayer. The quick scan Bible, you'll be able to read a chapter in 10 seconds. You've never seen a layout like this. We try to get more and can't. Morris Cirillo only have 14 of these left. He's gone to be with the Lord. So this is a once in a lifetime. Financial Freedom Bible. He color coded the money verses. He color coded the money verses. All three of these books. We're going to send them out uh, probably by tomorrow from our uh, Seed World. Seed World is where all of our books are. Thank you, son. If you'll take this to the uh, prayer center and show them, and that's, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the offer number? 1027. Offer 1027 to the first eight people who sow a $200 seed. If it's something you want to make your faith promise today, as God provides it, I don't take financial vows. I don't do the vows. That's too tense and stressful for me. Just make a promise to God, Lord, if you'll provide me, I'll sow it. There's a, there's a preacher watching me today. It's on a downer. And you've had some things happen that you're really on a downer. There's a preacher watching me today that's not doing well emotionally. Just pray and give your name and your phone number, just your name and your phone number to my prayer center and say, well, I'm the preacher that's going through some struggles. That's all you have to say. I will never betray you in any way. Never have anybody. Never. But there's a preacher that's really going through a downer. It's, uh, it's, not, it, it's serious. It's serious. Father, there's a man, maybe a lady minister, but I think it's a man. There's a preacher watching me today that's going through the most dramatic place. Please silence every voice that's brought them pain. Please create a people path out of this trauma. It's a trauma. It's a trauma. I've had at least two nervous breakdowns in my life. So I call this a trauma. I don't care what caused it. I want to walk with you in intercession out of it. 
There's a preacher watching me today who's being traumatized. And I want to become your intercessor for the next five to seven days. God's going to give you a path through it. God's going to give you a path through it. If you don't mind calling that number, I won't answer that number. I'm over here in another room, two rooms away. 682-717-5359. Don't turn loose of your vision. It's not over yet, my friend. What God is planning Official Beaver 5045, please, please let me have your phone number in this faith promise. Please, if you want to email me, I'll look for that from Indonesia. Please let me know. Dr. Brown just wrote me, quote, praise report. I don't give you enough praise report. You ought to see, you ought to see some of the things that are happening to people. Last week after sowing one of my $58 seeds into your life, I was given the opportunity to invest in an app that will be an educational app for chiropractic. This will turn out to become an amazing financial opportunity. Mentor, I love when people call me mentor. Thank you for every opportunity to sow into your ministry. Robert Walden, write Robert's name down. Rick says, I will, my seed will be in the mail today. It's a seed of honor to you. I had three people yesterday. I had three people sow a personal seed in my personal life. It affected me greatly. Jacques, don't give up, son. Don't give up. You've got some broken pieces, but your ability to love is, there's a love anointing on your life. Very unusual, Jacques. Don't give that up. Amen. There's my phone number, my email. I'm going to show you a four-minute video or so. Watch it before you leave. Would you watch it? And I'm going to go, and I've got some uh, something I've got to really work with. And I hope to see you at 5 o'clock live right here on this Thursday afternoon, October the 27th. Thanks with all my heart. I'm 76 years old. Mike Murdoch here. I've been in the ministry 56 years. One of the greatest songs God ever put in my heart was, You are. Holy God, and I, I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. You are the love of my life, my holy King. You are my world, my everything. You are my God, and I'm so happy. I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful, you are my God, my holy God, and I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful, I can't say enough, I just got through teaching today, on the seven laws for learning. Isaiah 
117 says learn to do well. And I shared for two hours today things that should be learned. I'm starting another website for partners called harvest638.com. If there's any scripture I believe in the Bible, it's Luke 6:38. Give and it shall be given unto you. It's changed my world, changed my life. There's six books I would like to sow into your life. One's called Right Words, book 884, number one. The second is Wisdom for Women, book 670. Third book is book 45, 101 Wisdom Keys. The fourth book is book 894, Wisdom Talk number two. The second novel I ever wrote called The Old Man and His Money. It's book 693. The sixth book is called 31 Days to Your Money World. Book 808. The three greatest money secrets of my life are in that book. Book 808, Your Money World. Five dollars each. Five dollars each. Or five for twenty dollars. And if there's a preacher watching me, I will send you any 50 of any title for $100, $2 each. That'll cost me money, but I want you to have it. If there's any pastor or leader and you want to buy 50 copies of any one of these titles, I'll pay all the shipping and handling. It's 50 copies for just $100. When you bless other people, you prove that you care. And you don't get a better gift than a book of wisdom. Take a note of this. Eight hours a day, my staff answers the phone here. My prayer team, 682-717-5359. From 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 at night. If you would like to call, call now. My post office box is 1925, Colleyville. I'll send you another video tomorrow about this. Thank you for being a part of the Wisdom Center church family. We love you with all of our heart. Any of these books, $5 each, 48 pages, they're full color on the inside too. They're out of this world. You've never seen books like this. Easy to read, life-changing. 682-717-5359. That's the phone number to call. Any day, seven days a week, from 11 o'clock to 7 at night. I love you. And don't forget, watch me live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Two times a day, live, right here. 12 o'clock noon and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. 12 o'clock noon and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I love you. So glad we're together.